Well, hello there, good people. It's your boy, Johnny J, and welcome to another photo adventure. Come with me while we discover a new location and chase some epic light. I'm heading out to a bit of coastline I haven't photographed for a fairly long time. So it's actually a new bit of track and I've been along here for work, but never for myself. So looking forward to exploring that. But two things has to happen. Oh, it's hot today. I'm gonna to put this on my head under my hat. <laughs> Keep the sun off the back of my neck. And uh, the other thing is I'm gonna pull my socks up. It feels really snaky. So I don't know if the socks are gonna help that much, but it makes me feel better anyway. All right, let's do it. Did I mention it was hot? Whew. Damn, it's hot out here. Anyway, no snakes yet, so that's a plus. I've given myself about two and a half hours to scout this location before sunset, so thumbs up to that. Plenty of time to find a Schmidt composition. The other thing I'm really liking is these high clouds. It's also saying 70 to 100% cloud cover. <sighs> Fingers crossed, toes crossed, legs crossed. <laughs> and hopefully we get some color. That's the plan. Anyway, let's keep pushing on. See if we can find our first composition. Ooh, I like that. There's some fresh water laying down there. I think it's running out of this little gully here and pooling up down the bottom down here. I kind of like it. Let's go and see if there's a cop down there. I do love this location. I really love this pond here in front of me and I love there's, a, there's another headland out there in front, which is really, really nice. I think there is definitely a composition here. One thing I'm not a major fan of, because we're down a little gully here, we've got this big hill up over here, okay? And I feel like what's gonna happen, the sun's gonna set behind it. You can see the sun up there doing its thing, the big boy and all this area is going to end up in shade and i feel like that's not going to be that pleasing i think we can get a better composition so i think this composition will be better when sun the sun moves out this direction and starts setting around uh, more towards the front or even over to the right of this composition a little bit more over this way so we can get a bit more light into the scene as the sun's setting so we'll put that one in the bag for another time i feel like we can find something a little bit better i feel like when that foreground's in full shade it isn't going to be as pleasing as what it could be if the sun was a bit further around. So, all right, let's keep moving on and see if we can find a cop. All right, so we've just arrived at the headland. I did my research on Google Maps and had a look, and I think I'm gonna find a foreground here. I've already seen a couple of things I'm really excited about. And what's really cool about this spot is we've got the sun setting out this way, okay? And then we've got this beautiful lines of the coast that's gonna hopefully be in the shot when I can find some foreground. So uh, yeah, that's it. Walk around, find something that makes me go, wow. And that hopefully will be my foreground. All right, I'm gonna pull these little fellas out. They're a weed. That is bitter bush. Definitely don't need any more of that growing around the coast. We'll put it up here on the rocks. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Okay, this has jumped out at me. That is cool. Look at this. Beautiful luminancy. Look at the green of that. It's just amazing. Oh, really, really happy with this. I think this could be it. I'm really excited about this part of the rock over there, you see, but beautiful. Look how lush and green it is, it's just beautiful. So our uh, sun will be setting out this way. We've got that lovely bit of coastline through there. Maybe a portrait orientation, you know, taking in this here and the coast and the setting sun over there. We've also got this rock here and uh, these rocks either side as well, balancing out that foreground. 
There's also some really cool orange lichen over there that I really like as well. Let me get the camera out. I might have a look, quick look through the camera and see what I reckon. So we're finally set up here. We've got our copper scission ready. The sun's going down. The clouds are looking amazing. Oh my God, it's looking awesome. Let me show you what we're looking at over here. Look at those clouds. How cool are they? Looking really cool. They've got these big streaks in the sky, looking really awesome. So hopefully they catch some light. There is some clouds on the horizon that, you know, you can see along the horizon line here, there is a cloud bank there. So that may stop the color, but that's okay. I'll take whatever we can get today. There's still some cool clouds around and that's awesome. All right, let me show you on the back of the camera here. Let's fire up this bad boy. Let's look at this foreground. Oh, look at this foreground. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. It's looking awesome. Really, really happy. Do you know what I might do? I'll just take a quick shot here because I just want to zoom in. If I play that back and zoom in for you, just expose for that foreground. Look how cool that plant looks there. Really, really loving that plant. That is really, really awesome. Oh, I love that bit there where it's up on the rock. That's what I mentioned earlier. It looks really, really cool. Epic mix source. All right, so that's the foreground. The other thing that's cool about the foreground, you'll notice, there's a diagonal line, it, it's, and that greenery is anchoring that bottom corner of the composition. So I really, really like how that looks. And then moving up to the left-hand side, you can see we've got this pile of rocks here that's built up, and there's some awesome lichen, orange lichen on that as well, which is really, really cool. So don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> All right, back to the composition. That was a really bad joke. One thing you'll notice as we move into the mid-ground here, I'll show you that, I'll expose that there. We've got a diagonal line, sort of high on the left and down on the right. And if you look at the foreground, the greenery is low on the left and high on the right. So those diagonals are opposite. And I've done that intentionally because opposite diagonals or any diagonals in your frame look awesome. And if you can find opposite diagonals, they even look cooler in your frame. So it's really, really cool compositional tip there. Look for diagonal things moving through your frame. It just makes things a lot more pleasing to the eye and I nearly fell over, so shocker. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the background now. And you can see we've got the headlands moving through there and back to the mainland over there, the other headland across the other side of the bay there, and then up to those beautiful clouds and that setting sun right in the middle of the frame. So all in all, I'm really happy how things are looking. So far, so good. We just gotta wait for the light now, see what happens. One thing I might do while we're getting some nice diffused light on this foreground is actually take a photograph for this foreground plant, just in case I need it later and I wanna use that more diffused light. Because what happens if the sun sets down, okay, and we, it blocks the light and we don't get much of a throw of color, there's a chance that all my foreground might end up in shade. So I feel like getting this little bit of diffused light we're getting now might be a bit more pleasing to blend in later with our setting sun. So let's do that. So we are at F11, ISO 100, focus point, just focusing down there on the plant, two second timer on, then we'll take that shot now. Beautiful, so I'll just play that back. Let's have a little bit of a look there. Yep, nice and sharp, and you can see some of that lovely diffused light that's down there. Look, chances are I may not need it, but hey, I've got it, and that's the key to photography, is just put, thinking ahead, thinking what you might need, and making sure you capture that while you're in the field. All right, I'm gonna just gonna wait around for the light now, and uh, I'll get back to you when it's time to start shooting a few frames. All right, she's dropping down now, getting nice and low. What I have done is I added a circular polarizer and I just found it, it helped bring out a bit of those luminous greens, knocked off that bit of a specular highlight I was having and, and a bit on the rock as well. And definitely what it's done is knocked off the specular highlights on the water, which is really, really nice. Also added an ND8, okay? And uh, that's allowed me to get a longer exposure. I'm liking the longer exposure. At this stage, if I wanted to take this, the dynamic range is still crazy. You know, I'm getting about a second for that water movement there. And that's giving us, let's have a look at that. Zoom in. Yeah, it's just, just taking the edge off it. Yeah, I'm liking a second, that's looking good. But then I need to expose for the foreground here as well. All right, there's our foreground shot there. 
nothing's moving in the wind down there, so everything's still nice and sharp, beautiful. And then I have to take a third exposure to underexpose for that sky as well. So it's sort of a, a three-part exposure at this point in time. So the reason why I have to shoot the three exposures at the moment is because there's so much light coming off the water. It's just so damn bright. I can see there is a bit of a blocker out there on the horizon. Look, you just never know. You just never know. You know, I can't see past there. I can't tell you what's going on, whether there's a gap out there, because I can't see anything at the moment. So just in case this is all the light we get, I started shooting now. Unfortunately, you can see that block of cloud out there. <laughs> Little bugger. <laughs> it's gonna hold up the light. Mightn't get a throw. Just don't know, it's, it's, it's like, 50-50 chance, you just never know sometimes. Like I always say, never pack up, go home too early because you just never know what's gonna happen. It's literally sunset is, it's five minutes away, I believe. Let's have a look, 7.38. It's a, yeah, it's about five minutes away till sunset now. So yeah, we're just gonna hang out. I'm just gonna keep shooting a few frames just like that. And let's see if we get some color. It's really softened off, the sun's dropped down. You can see a tiny gap, but I don't think we're really gonna get the epic light we were hoping for, but it's still really pretty. And you know what? I'm just happy to be here and that's all that matters. I'm just out in nature, doing my thing, sharing another photo adventure with you guys. And I couldn't be happier, to be honest. Could not be happier. You can see the foreground here. This is what I was talking about. When that blocker cloud comes in, you can see how flat, it's just all in shadow now, the foreground. And that's why I took those frames a bit earlier on when we had that soft light hitting that foreground, it was way more pleasing. So yeah, that's why we took that frame earlier. Just gonna take the last few frames for the sky now and that'll be it. Really happy how that looks, so. Yeah, look, honestly, the block of cloud is in play, which sucks. <laughs> but what can you do, man? It was still pretty. We got some pretty light earlier. Oh, there's some, there's, gee, there's some nice clouds around, I tell you catching some light. Oh, I'd love it if that was uh, over this way. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good in the hood. You know what? I've really enjoyed coming out and checking out a location I haven't been to in a long time. All right, good people, that's it. I think that's pretty much all the light we're gonna get. There's a block of cloud there. Definitely I can see it right on the horizon line now. But hey, that's okay. We still got a lovely frames. I still love the foreground, that long exposure. I think it's gonna make for a nice image even though we didn't get the epic colors we were hoping for. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, Johnny. It's not over till it's over, brother. I pretty much packed up, left my camera in place, packed up all my filming gear. And look at this business. This is why you never leave. Stay right to the end. <laughs> yes, look at that light. It's epic. Anyway, you'll have to wait and I'll show you what it looks like on the computer. All right, how was that light? Amazing. She just threw right at the last minute, right at the death. We got the, the awesome colors. Anyway, let's jump over to Lightroom and have a bit of a look here. So you can see, here's our three photographs. This is the exposure for the foreground here. And then we've got our long exposure for that water area. And then we've also got another exposure, underexposed for that sky. So I still went with the three exposures and that's really helping with that dynamic range. And then I just did a few tweaks in those and Lightroom. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I'll just turn these layers off here so you can see them. And you can see here's our base layer down here. That was, that was our uh, foreground shot. And here's our water layer blended in and our sky layer blended in. And I also did, you can see some levels adjustments in between them there. And um, that's just to change the exposure a little bit in different places, just to um, help the blend seem a lot more seamless together. So you obviously want the sky to be brighter and the foreground to be darker and, and that mid-ground to be sort of middle of the road, not too dark, not too bright. And and that um, helps pull the blend off, which I think uh, worked out really, really good here. So here's a few other tweaks, you know, there's a midtone contrast, um, some vignetting, and also um, brought this lichen out a little bit as well. So I think all in all, that turned out really, really well. Happy where that was at. And I just went back into Lightroom now and finished things off. And one of the most important things I did here, and you'll see here's the before, so that's straight out of Photoshop, and that's the after. You can see I've darkened down the top of the sky here. Doing that just helps your eye not get pulled out of the frame, okay? Makes that area a little bit darker, and I've 
lightened up this area and also remove some contrast from that area and add a bit of D clarity just to soften the light around that horizon line. You can see if I turn that on, off, and on, off and on, on there. It's just softening that area and it helps give your image a little bit of depth. And usually what I do is I like to subtract the luminosity range of the shadows. So it's just affecting those brighter areas, those mid-tones and those brighter areas along that horizon line. And it just helps give that scene a little bit more depth. So again, there's the full before, after, before, after, and also desaturated the oranges a little bit. Sometimes, you know, when you get this awesome throw of colors, um, you'll find that they can be a little bit too much and you want to pull the colors back so they don't look so surreal. Particularly when you start adding contrast, those colors can get a little crazy. Anyway, really happy with that last photograph. It uh, turned out really, really well. Alright good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed another epic photo adventure. How was that light? Right at the last minute, she snuck out under those clouds and boom, epic color. So I was just, just so lucky. I packed up all my filming gear and still had my uh, camera set up there just in case because you never, never know. Hey, you want to show me some love, support the channel, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more of these videos, I'd love it if you subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so I'd really appreciate that support. And if you've got any comments, feedback, questions, please pop them in the comments section below. More than happy to help. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.